Some of them didn't even get a chance to play in the NBA. Some of them were only able to scratch the surface of their potentials as NBA players. Some of them were entering the NBA stardom. But each and every one of them had much more to offer than they were given a chance to. Here's a list of 10 NBA players who left us too soon before fully showing their talents to the NBA world. He was supposed to be the one to give Michael Jordan a run for his money. But, as fate would have it, Len Bias never got the chance to compete against the best. Just two days after he was drafted by the Boston Celtics, the 22-year-old University of Maryland star collapsed in his Washington Hall dormitory suite on the College Park campus. Two hours later, he was pronounced dead. An autopsy revealed that an unusually pure dose of cocaine triggered a heart failure, interrupting the normal electrical control of his heartbeat, resulting in sudden onset of seizures and cardiac arrest. Bias stood no chance. He was supposed to be the next guy to take the NBA by storm. Instead, he was gone way too soon. Unlike Bias, Reggie Lewis got to showcase his talent on basketball's biggest stage. He was six years into his NBA run, was already an all-star and one of the best performers at the shooting guard position. But unfortunately, that's where it all ended. On July 27, 1993, at the age of 27, Lewis collapsed and went into cardiac arrest. Attempts to revive him at the scene were unsuccessful. The Celtics captain was dead on the spot. This happened months after Reggie collapsed during their first round matchup against the Hornets. He went under tons of heart tests and was diagnosed with a career-ending heart disorder. Lewis later received a second, somewhat less serious diagnosis that allowed him to get back to basketball. But we never got to see him wear number 35 for the Celtics again. The number was retired by Boston in 1995 as a tribute to a gone too soon Maryland native. LeBron James called him the best European player ever. He's universally recognized as one of the best shooters in NBA history. He was one of the first Europeans to make a successful transition from Europe to the NBA and he paved the way for all who followed. Still, Dražen Petrovic never fully realized his potential as a basketball player. His doors closed on him way too soon. On June 7, 1993, Petrovic passed away in a fatal car accident on the Autobahn in Bavaria, Germany. He was traveling home to Zagreb, Croatia from the qualifying tournament for the European Basketball Championships in Poland. Instead of flying with the team, Petro decided to drive home. At the moment of impact, Dražen was sleeping in the passenger seat. He died on the spot. The Mozart of basketball was inducted posthumously into the Hall of Fame in 2002. With a three-point percentage of 43.7%, he is still fourth on the NBA's list for three-point field goal percentage. And he could have done so much more. With the first pick of the 1990 NBA Draft, the New Jersey Nets select Hank Gathers from Loyola Marymount. According to most scouts and GMs in the NBA at the time, that's what David Stern should have said. Instead, the Nets took Derek Coleman. Hank Gathers wasn't on the board. He died in a West Coast Conference Tournament semifinal game after collapsing from a heart condition on March 4th, 1990. An autopsy showed that the Loyola Marymount star didn't take his prescribed medicine for at least eight hours before his death. He passed away due to heart muscle disorder with no illegal substances found in his body. Gathers had led the country in both scoring and rebounding. He was the focal point of coach Paul Westhead's offensive system. And he never got the chance to showcase his talent in the NBA. Praised as one of the funniest basketball players at the time, Wendell Ladner was the nomad of the ABA. A 6'5 forward played for five different teams over the course of just five seasons. He was a two-time All-Star, 74 ABA champ, and a solid all-around contributor no matter where he played. But like everyone else on this list, Ladner didn't get the chance to maximize his basketball talent. On June 24, 1975, Wendell boarded the plane from New Orleans to New York City. 
Closing in to New York, the weather caused the plane to malfunction, causing a crash that killed 113 out of 124 people on board. Unfortunately, the 26-year-old Ladner wasn't among the survivors. Due to the nature of the crash, the Nets forward wasn't identified on the spot. However, a 1974 championship ring confirmed that Wendell was one of the victims of the horrific crash. The Nets paid tribute to Ladner by retiring his number 4 jersey since that fateful day. Despite being a journeyman in the ABA, that's where Wendell Ladner left his biggest mark. He was competitive as hell, said Mike Fratello, who was an assistant coach with the Hawks during Terry Furlow's tenure in Atlanta. He'd fight you in a game and he understood the toughness of the NBA. There were some other things that he just couldn't get past. Unfortunately, those other things cost Furlow his life. On May 23, 1980, he was killed in a car accident in Ohio. After he crashed into a pole with his 79 Mercedes-Benz. An autopsy later discovered he had illegal substances in his bloodstream after a long night of partying in Cleveland with his former Cavalier teammate, Clarence Walker. Terry stood no chance. His four-year run in the NBA was cut short. The trajectory he was on, it seemed like Furlow was just scratching the surface of the player he could have become. He was coming off a career year with the Jazz, where he averaged 16 points and 4 assists in 55 games played. It seemed like, after years of bouncing around the league, he had finally found his place in the sun. But it wasn't meant to be. Furlow died at the age of 25, and he had so much more to give to the NBA world. Kenny Smith described Ricky Barry as the Reggie Miller with a handle. Former Kings forward Henry Turner called him Peja Stojakovic before Peja Stojakovic. Longtime Chicago Bulls scout Dave Ballwinkle saw him as a perennial all-star. But it was all in vain. Ricky took his life at the age of 24. His wife Valerie found him on the floor of the family room with a gunshot wound to his head. A suicide note was found at the scene offering Barry's explanation on why he did what he did. The note began with Ricky telling his parents, younger sister and Valerie that he loved them. He also added that the suicide could have been avoided, but the frustrations with the little things in his struggling marriage were why he took his life. Barry was coming off his rookie campaign where he averaged 11 points in 64 games played. It was enough for the entire NBA community to see the potential a kid from Michigan State had. But Ricky decided against maximizing his basketball talents. He decided he's had enough. The NBA world can't say the same. After years of wandering, it seemed like Bobby Fills finally found his groove in the NBA. A second round pick from the 1991 NBA draft established himself as one of the key contributors for the Charlotte Hornets and even had an NBA defensive second team selection to his name. But his NBA story had a tragic end to it. On January 12, 2000, Bobby was involved in a car crash after reportedly racing with a teammate, David Wesley, at more than 75 miles per hour. The Hornets guard lost control of his 1997 Porsche and collided head-on with the vehicle heading towards him. Phils was killed instantly and two people in vehicles involved in the accident were hospitalized. Stunned and tearful teammates and Charlotte's officials gathered at the accident scene. Minutes earlier, Phils had been practicing for Wednesday's night game against the Bulls. The next day, his teammates were saying goodbye to him, along with the entire NBA community. Only five months after Bobby Phils died in a car crash, the Timberwolves forward Malik Seeley was killed in a head-on collision in a Minneapolis suburb. Malik was on his way home from Kevin Garnett's 24th birthday party when his Range Rover got hit by a Dodge pickup truck. Seeley's death left the Timberwolves organization in shock. The NBA paid tribute to Seeley by holding a moment of silence before the Western Conference final playoff game between the Lakers and the Trailblazers. Years later, Kevin Garnett did the same by changing his jersey number from 5 to 2 and getting a tattoo with Malik's name on his right arm. Garnett paid tribute to his late friend and the guy he looked up to throughout the entirety of his NBA career. 
over his eight-year run in the association, Sealy averaged 10 points, three rebounds, and nearly two assists per game. He was 29 when the fatal crash took place. Malik's best basketball years were ahead of him, but unfortunately, fate wanted otherwise. Bryce Dijon Jones is the only active NBA player to die in the past decade. The former New Orleans Pelican was fatally shot after breaking down the door to a Dallas apartment on May 28, 2016. The 23-year-old was visiting his ex-girlfriend for his daughter's first birthday. The two got into an argument, after which Jones went for a walk. He returned hours later, but unfortunately went to the wrong apartment. He was banging on the door before finally kicking them open. The resident thought someone was breaking in and shot the intruder, causing Jones to die with a gunshot wound to the abdomen. Bryce appeared in 14 games for the Pelicans. He averaged 5.6 points, 3.4 rebounds, and one assist before suffering a season-ending wrist injury. A week prior to undergoing wrist injury, the Pelicans signed Dijon Jones to a partially guaranteed three-year contract, but unfortunately, he never got the chance to play it out. If you enjoyed the video, please hit like and subscribe to our channel for more basketball content.